Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 8 of our Sudoku series on Scratch 3. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Just Finish Coding. Now I have to interject right here that if you've not watched parts 1 to 7, please watch them before you come here because as you can see, I'm picking up from where I left off. And for this video to make sense, you need to watch the previous ones. I'll leave a card for you right here. Please watch the videos and then come right back. If you're still here, I'm gonna assume that you've watched parts one to seven, in which case this is going to be the last video in the series and we'll be finishing up our entire Sudoku game in this video. So I'm gonna start off by making sure that our answer can be checked when we receive the check of winner message. So to do that, I'll be creating a block and I'll be saying um, set up answer list okay set up answer list and um, we'll be having another list called answer list I suppose and I'll be making that for all sprites so let me say answer list there we go and we can uh, oops I didn't mean to do that I meant to set up a new list and by set up I meant make a new list and I would call it answer list so let's set it for all sprites answer list there we go you can click okay and what we can do here is we'll basically first delete all of this list and we'll be making sure that the regular uh, answer, which we have, you know, set up in rows, can be made into a list which looks more like the board. So to do that, we can use the, pretty much the exact same code which we used in our answer number sprite. And we have two repeat untils, uh, not repeat untils, two repeat nines, okay? And um, just like the, um, the way we did it there, I'm going to reuse the answer x and answer y variables. So first I'll be setting answer y to one here. Then I will be setting answer x to one here. Um, then I will be changing answer x by one here. And here I will be changing answer y by one. So very simple. This is exactly the same thing we did there. And uh, just in between when uh, within our inner loop, I'll be saying add, um, add thing to not answer, but answer list. Um, and we'll basically be adding the way we got uh, the exact same way we got that number. So it's going to be letter answer x. So letter answer x of um, not apple, but um, letter answer x of item. So letter answer x of item, answer y of answer. And that is pretty much going to be it. So if we just run this code, for example, after we press the green flag, or rather than that, just um, you know zoom out completely. Uh, let me set up the answer list first. And then when we set up the second answer list, uh, and then we can just click on show answer list. You can see that, okay, we have just a bunch of spaces. So I will be saying set answer and then let me click on this. And once we do, okay, I just have 163 and okay, I just realized what was wrong with the code and it was that I was deleting answer instead of answer list. So now when we set answer up and then we click on this once again, you can see that boom, we have 81, um, we have 81 items. And I'm not entirely sure what's going on with the first item since it's a blank. And there are actually many blanks actually. So I will check out my code once and then I will be right back. All right, so I just went through my code and the error turned out to be that I was setting answer x to zero instead of one. So if you set it to one and then run the initialize command and then um, you know set up answer list, um, this should work perfectly and you would have the entire answer set up. So I'm gonna now hide that list back once again. And now th this is what we need to do. So when, uh, when we receive check of winner, uh, and I'm going to do it right here. So check if winner, then I will first um, be um, setting up this answer list. So I will say set up answer list. And uh, after this, um, you can actually just put the set up answer list here. Actually, you don't even have to, you know, do it every single time we receive this message. And uh, here I'm going to make a new function and I'm going to say check answer. Okay. And uh, here um, I'm going to loop through each item of these two lists. Uh, uh, and by two lists, I mean board and um, this um, answer list. And I will be checking if any of the items are different. If they're different, it means that it's not working. The solution doesn't work. But if they're all the same, then the solution does work. So I'll be making a new variable for the sprite only. And I'm going to call it works followed by question mark to show that it's Boolean. And here I will be setting works to yes. So set works to yes. And um, after this, I will be saying uh, and I'm pretty sure I said run without screen refreshed. Yep, there we go. So after this, I will be saying repeat 81 times uh, and I will be using the reusing the numbers counter variable. 
So set number counter to one here, set um, numbers counter to one. And I'm pretty sure I put it somewhere around here, but since there are too many variables, it's just hard to find it. There we go. So set numbers counter to one. And here I will be checking if, so add an if here, if item numbers counter um, is equal to, uh, if item numbers counter of, um, where's that? Yeah, so if item numbers counter of, uh, not answer, but answers list is equal to item numbers, and let me just drop that variable first. So if item numbers counter, okay, this is a pretty hard task to find them. There we go, put that right there, and let me duplicate this now. So if item numbers counter of answer list is equal to item numbers counter of board, then we will stay with uh, works as yes. But if we reverse this condition with a not, then what we can do is we can just set works to no. So set works to no. And this way we can just check works in the end. So set works to no. And we also need to make sure that we change, you know, the numbers counter variable because if it just stays this way, we'll just check the first element 81 times, which is not what we want to do. So just change numbers counter by one each and every time. And after this, we can just check it here. So I will um, say check answer. Uh, so check answer in blocks right here. Uh, there we go. And uh, after this, I will be checking if works is yes or no. So if works is equal to yes. So I will gra drag and drop the works variable followed by an if then. And I will say if works is equal to yes, then what I will do is I will broadcast player wins. So broadcast player wins, and I meant to do it this way. So broadcast player wins, and you can just say new message followed by player wins. There we go. And now it's important to change some, uh, change some stuff in our text. So I'm gonna click on text, and clearly we don't have much going on here. So I'm gonna remove the show from um, this, and I'll say when I receive player wins, and that's right here, I will switch costume to you win. And when we receive um, game over, which is a new message that I will be um, broadcasting. But when we receive game over, I will switch costume to game over. And we will also move a little bit to the right because this doesn't exactly fit on the left end of the screen. And we can just say go to x negative 80, y145. And I'm just gonna broadcast game over at the end of this, you know, after, uh, after we create the answer clones. So right after this, just say broadcast, um, follow that up with a not new message, but we can just say broadcast uh, game over. And that is pretty much all we need. So now we can head over to the square, um, to the square sprite. And here uh, we need to do two things. So first is when we receive game over, we need to make sure that the user can't click on the square once again. And uh, to do that, we can just say when we receive game over, uh, and player wins. So I'll first do it for player wins, I guess. And maybe I'll do it at the bottom where there's more space um, to stick around. So when I receive game over, um, we will be uh, setting editable to no. So when we set editable to no, it means that none of the squares can be changed anymore. So that's a pretty good way to, you know, get around doing that. And uh, in, in addition to setting edit, uh, editable to no, I'm also gonna set marking to, okay, marking was set to null here. So I'm gonna leave it here. But I will be duplicating this once again, and I will be saying when I receive player wins, then we will also set marking to null. And uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to use the marking variable to be like an indicator for whether we can, um, you know, even change the squares costume as well. And uh, also when we receive, um, I'm not sure if we set that up yet, but when we um, basically click on view solution, we need to make sure that, you know, uh, none of the squares can be selected. Okay, I didn't do that. So what we can do now is use the, uh, use that marking variable as an indicator here. So we will be switching um, costume only if both can start is equal to yes and marking is not equal to null. So if marking is equal to null, then this condition is gonna reverse to false. And as a result, we will never, you know, get around to doing this. So I will be grabbing the marking variable from the variables category and putting it here, and this should fix that problem. So now when we press the green flag and then we click on view solution um, by clicking on that checker, um, now we can no longer select any square. And I'm gonna try one more thing, which I'm not entirely sure works or not. And that is I'll be clicking on a square and then clicking on view solution. And as you can see, we basically removed that and we made sure that 
all the costumes were back to not touched. And I think I did it when we received answer. So that works pretty neatly. To finish our game, the last thing we need to do is set up our thumbnail. So you can click on upload sprite and all we need to do is import the thumbnail. And you have to navigate through your files to get uh, to um, this file which says sudoku thumbnail.svg and this is the thumbnail that I will be using. So um, when you head over to costumes, just make sure that everything is centered up neatly. And uh, when we uh, hit the green flag, and I'm gonna start off when the green flag is clicked itself, um, I'll be setting the ghost effect to 100 so that it's transparent, but it's still there, um, not size, but the ghost effect to 100. So set ghost effect to 100, there we go. And uh, now I'm gonna enter into a forever loop. And each and every time I'm going to reset this thing called the uh, called the timer. So reset timer. And now when you head over to events, you should be able to get this block of code which says when um, timer is greater than something. And you can change this to be 0 0.01. And whenever we reset timer, the timer turns back to zero. So this condition is never going to be true as long as this forever loop is executing. But when it stops executing, um, the timer is going to get to more than 0 0.01. And as a result, we'd have to enter into whatever code is right here. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure that these two variables are hidden. So I will say hide variable pencil, um, hide variable pencil side, and I will also hide variable um, marking. So once you do these two things, it's important to just check for a second um, that you showed all of them at the beginning. And I, I did this here. And in case you didn't, you can add those two lines of code. So now let's head back to the thumbnail. And here it's also important to make sure that the thumbnail goes right to the front layer. And um, to do that, you can just add in a go to front layer in the forever loop itself so that every single time we're resetting the thumbnail, we go to the front layer. And uh, if you just have these things in place and then you press the green flag, all of this works. And when we press the stop key, this thing works as well. And that ladies and gentlemen is going to be your entire Sudoku game. I've sure had a blast making the series and I do hope that at this point you have a completely working Sudoku game as well. If you've enjoyed this game series then please make sure you click on the playlist on your screen right here and that'll take you to a brand new game segment. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next series.